Making the Pentabell, Rotary Air Engine, Part 2. I'm now working on the air channel. It's going to take the air from here and feed it to the bellow. For that, I have, uh, I'm making it from a 1 8 inch thick uh, basswood is what it is, but I'm going to cut out, I have my pieces here, I'm going to cut out the interiors. So I'm going to glue it down to another piece of wood, seal the interior grain, then cut out the finished piece. That'll be a piece that goes right on there. First we're going to need some way to connect the bellow to the connecting rods. For that, I've come up with this pattern here. I'll kind of compound scroll it. Drill the holes through, cut out my notch, cut out the side, and cut them apart. That should give me all my attachment pieces that I'll glue onto the end here. Attach this piece to the bellow simply on the side without the hole, of course. Glue it, lining it up with the end. Just kind of center it by the eye, that should be good enough. You want to make sure that the holes are square to the top here so that uh, it doesn't kind of twist on the connecting rod. So when I'm gluing them, I'm putting a little uh, rod through just so I can make it, you know, by the eye, line it up. The air channels, I think I'll glue those on first, or at least get them to tack up a little bit, and then this will glue on like that, lined up better than this of course, but... Here's part way through the glue up. Just kind of tack it on, set it on a flat surface, and then I squared it. Just using basic wood glue to glue the things in place, clamping it in two directions to keep it flush with the base and against the air channel. So we're at the point where all the bellows are glued on to the main wheel here. So we need to make the middle basically axle and valve control system that's going to go in the middle here. That's going to be made from this uh, 17 30 seconds tube. So we got to cut off our section and drill some holes in it to line up with the air channel pads. For that I've made a little pattern for a jig. I'll make the jig now. Here we have the jig. I put the tube in already. Basically I'm going to make a slight mark on the tube, drill my hole, turn it to the next position, drill my hole, turn it, drill my hole, and then cut it off. The results from the jig are as such. They're pretty good. There's a little, there's a little allowance for slop, so to speak, back and forth. And once it's in place, can't really see, but it'll be centered over the holes, and it won't really be. Doesn't need to be exactly perfect. 
Because it's important that I cut it off perfectly square, because there's going to be a kind of a bushing or something that rubs on on, one, on each side to keep it centered, I've rigged up my uh, kind of apparatus for cutting things, uh, tubes and stuff, uh, more precisely with uh, my rotary tool. So I think I can do a pretty straight cut this way. Stopped with just a little bit there, and I'll clean that up by hand. Otherwise, um, it comes off and might rub. Once I cut it off, and then using a hobby knife, you know, clean up the edges and best I could on these. Then I took, I actually had a uh, half inch stainless steel tube, which I roughed up the end slightly and put it in my drill press and then used it to kind of deburr the inside. And I had some 1200 grit sandpaper. Uh, usually you can find that in like an automotive section for, you know, finishing. Taped to a dull and I used that to sand the inside a little bit. Then I went with a uh, small buffing wheel and buffed the inside. So I was just trying to get that as smooth as possible because I'm going to use a aluminum half inch rod and I don't want the uh, the um, brass to be cutting or grooving into it as it spins. Also I wanted to spin as free as possible.